We're excited about another week of our broadcast, A Wonderful Day in the Lord. Uh, occasionally I hear from different ones who I didn't know was watching the program and that, that they're use, watching it on a regular basis, getting something out of it. And uh, we trust that's the case for you if you're watching today. We've been looking at a short series here, uh, going through the New Testament, looking at commandments God gives his people. And I want to, before we look at some uh, some more in Romans, we're going to look a few more this week in Romans. But before I do, I want to back up to Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. In verse 1, it says that uh, that he urges us by the mercies of God to present our bodies to as living sacrifices. And we looked at that command last week. But I want to go back to the issue of mercies. The basis and the motivation for why we obey the Lord uh, is uh, because of his mercies for us, his love for us. Uh, we love him because he first loved us. And so the greatest and the highest motivation of the Christian life is not fear or duty or obligation or anything along that line. It's, it's the mercies and the love of God. We, we serve him out of the abundance of, of love he has for us. And we in turn want to uh, love him in similar ways. And so that is a motivation for our obedience. And if we obey the Lord out of, out of our love for him and his love for us, uh, that takes away the burden, as First John chapter five says, of, of obedience. There's no no burden when we love someone to do things that are right, and that is true with God as well. We're looking today at chapter thirteen, and we'll look at a, a command here that is burdensome to some people, especially in recent times, as we've had to face some of the mandates coming from our government that we haven't particularly always cared for, because this passage says this. Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities, for there's no authority except from God, and those who exist have been appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority has opposed the ordinances of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause for fear, for uh, good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of the authorities? Do what is good and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid, for it does not bear the sword in vain, for it is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Now, as I said a moment ago, this is an always a particular easy thing to do. We don't always like what our government mandates. Uh, we don't always like its uh, its reg rules and regulations and its tax code and and uh, different things that seem to impinge upon our freedoms. And uh, so when we come to a passage like this where it talks about government actually being a minister of God, appointed by him himself, even though government officials and leaders may not uh, uh, tilt their hat to God at all, they may not uh, uh, see themselves as the ministers of the Lord at all, and yet the Lord says he has set up governing authorities as he chooses to set them up, and he, they minister for him. Now, we know that government can be evil. Uh, we know that sinful people can do evil and awful things that are contrary to the will of God. And so obviously he's not telling us to obey government when government uh, wants us to do things that are contrary to the Lord's will. The government can never command us to sin, and we do that. But under general circumstances, uh, even when uh, rules come down, laws come down that we don't appreciate, uh, we're told to follow those mandates, to obey governing authorities. And so when we look at this particular passage of Scripture, we find a command, kind of an unusual command for us. We, we're thinking of commands in other, other genres, but this is a command uh, of everyday life. Everybody who lives on the planet lives under some government authority. Uh, some, are, some are more in tune with the things of God. We in America really have been blessed that uh, much of our foundational uh, structure was based upon at least the basic values of Scripture, if not on Christianity itself. So we have been really blessed, and that is starting to fade away now. As we look around us, we see many of the things that that were we took for granted being being eroded away. So we have a lot of things coming down that are contrary to the will of God. So discernment is going to be needed, uh, and we need to be very careful not to uh, to jump too quickly to say, well, I'm not going to obey government because I don't agree, because that's not the point. We may not agree, still we obey. But when the government uh, is contrary to the will of God, that's a different piece of work. 
But the scripture here was written at a time when most of the Roman government was over most people, and it was contrary to the will of God. And yet God calls on us to obey that, that authority unless it co is contradictory to the very will of God, the, the clear teaching of God's word. So here's a command, obey those who are in authority over us, unless, of course, government is causing us to do things or wants us to do things contrary to his will. Otherwise, we obey. So there's a command, not one that we always enjoy, but one that God gives us. We'll look at something else here a little later in chapter 14 tomorrow. We'll see you then.